All right. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I'm your host, Tyranno Senpai, and welcome to like literally my last live stream just ended like three minutes ago. And now we are actually going to be doing another one for Planet Zoo. Would you believe? So let's go ahead and get that underway. my avatar yep there he is except okay where am I based right here in Florida okay so let's start with the career stuff the Goodwin house zoo how many oh my god we got a lot we got a lot of zoos we got to do Eesh. okay so let's go with the Stately Homeschool in Good Wing House. This is the tutorial. Renovated and renamed after its purchase by Bernard Goodwin in the 1980s, Goodwin House has since become one of the most respected zoos in the country. More recently, it has undergone a further renovation to update many of the habitats and facilities, but due to various issues, that the work hasn't quite been completed. Which is where you come in. Let's start new. Here we go. Takes a little bit, doesn't it? Here we go. All right, let's go. Ah, look at it, it's beautiful. Ah, hey, yo, at Hematu. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. oh, oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> no dear. As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened, and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. <laughs> Less shouting that way. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Yes. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands-on. Okay. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Okay, where's the grizzly bear? Ah, here. Okay. Alright, is there... I need to... Like, what does it want me to do here? Alright, grizzly bear. Ah! Let me grab the Did you know bear. that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus Arctos Horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that, too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. See, now, this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. Yep. You can also get this Zachary's view of gone. an animal by simply double-clicking on it. 
Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. I would if I wasn't like... Mm, if I wasn't flat like this. Is there, is there a way to like... Fix that? Settings. Um... Basic controls. Select escape pan camera. Oh, okay. Rotate camera. Oh, that makes it so much easier. Ah, oh, thank God. Okay. Oh, that's zoom in, obviously. Okay, where's the lions? They are. There. West African lion. There's one. Panthera Leo Leo. All the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride. Although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. Okay, lady. Need to find an empty habitat, huh? Well, is there one marked up? By any chance? I have, like, no idea. Going through the trees. Oh, wait, there's one. As you can see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. Okay, here we go. There we are. A pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select Adopt from the side menu. Normally, the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. The last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. Hmm. When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center, where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So, how about you move them into their new home? Okay. Send to zoo. Here. When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal, and deliver them to your selected what habitat. What is that? You I see that. the trade center's location. So let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Okay. Trade center. I should be able to see it. But where? I don't... I don't see it. Where? Where is it? Wait a minute. Was that what I think it was? <gasps> elephants! Hi! Oh, I adore elephants. These are like my favorite animals. Well, that are extinct. Hold on, I want to try. Yes, Ansel works. It works in this. Oh, I'm so happy about this. Ah. Oh. Snap that. Right, landscape. Oswald. Oswad? Something like that. Oh, wait. What was that? Notifications? Aha. Now, where? Where's the trade center? She said she marked it, but I don't see where it is.
Oh wait, there it is. How did I not see that? Okay. Visiting players? Ooh, okay. Okay, locate the trade center. I've done that. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthog's habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. Right. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. Okay. All right. Shift to raise and lower. Z to go left and right. Z to Z plus. Okay. Confirm placement. Toggle advanced movement. Oh, god. I guess I'll work. And agua. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. Well, thing, pet. There we go. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and what's-its all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Okay. <coughs> I assume you marked it? Yes, you have. But I want to see the hippos first. Oh wow, look at you! Aren't you fantastic? Hold on. Oh, you are. <laughs> Ansel's really finicky with this. Snap. Right, and escape. Okay, here it is. I am oh, here. Before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. Ah, I did. That's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. <laughs> Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. Obstructed? By what? Wait a minute, do I need to flip it? Oh, wait, I saw that. Right. Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Hold up. I'll figure it out. Just give me a moment. Aha! There we go.
There. Good work. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. <laughs> but seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. Okay. Um... How do I do that? Okay, help. Highlight a section of the barrier, then click the glass barrier. Okay, I guess. There we go. Oh, okay. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view Place into a habitat a from the path they're walking so. on, because it makes them happy. And because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. The hey, last thing we need to do is to is add that? a donation no. box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy to reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. I will. Now, before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? Adopt and place four way, new As well ostriches. as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. Right, and they're all waiting in the trade center. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter, so guests can get a really good view of the animals. Wait, Z plus rotates it, right? Yeah, there we go. Place. Add a feeding station. Oh, there we go. Oh, good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run? At 43 miles per hour? Oh, oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> we have some ostriches. Well, Bernie certainly seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? <laughs> Every time we get an ostrich. So, now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals, so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. You'll need to rotate the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. Okay. Um. Does it say where I should put it? By any chance?
place doesn't seem to be occupied. So why not place it here? Oh, come on. Oh, wait. There's a place here marked for it. How is that not valid? Come on. It's like right there. Also, why does the plus button have to be like that? Keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness negatively, <laughs> in case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops, and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Uh, sure. Whatever you want, friend. Now, the reason everything has gone blue is because you're using the power heat map. This map allows you to see what is and what isn't powered in your zoo. So, once you've placed your transformer, you can click in the bottom left to turn the heat map off. There we go. Lovely this is work. Nice. Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food. And thanks to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. <gasps> Let's get on to your next objective That's then. That's cute. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. I wish she didn't start talking. Righty, your next job is to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So go ahead and build it. Just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh. And don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Is there oh, like a way to and get... make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. I don't suppose there's a way to like get that like thing from the bottom of the screen. Curve that around a little bit. And make it straight again. Take safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? <laughs> the way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay, then, you should start by double clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great, now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Okay. 
bag of years. Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters. Three point seven. Now that the habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. Well, I need to change this to glass. There we go. Change that to glass too. And this will also be glass. Okay, and donation box. Oh, the other ones didn't turn into glass. That's a shame. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. Orange and black, like a tiger. Oh, there's Choo Choo here. Did it work? Yeah, it did. Okay. There we go. Twelve million. Ten million. Jesus, you guys aren't cheap. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into Terrain and selecting the Water Tool. Pleasure on Simon. What? Oh wait, there's the terrain. I'm an I'm an idiot. <laughs> Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? Oh, all right. Place a toy. Blood, frozen blood pumpkin. And a rubbing pad? Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. Okay, so you need a place to hide. How about here? 
That should be all right. Oh, poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. First, you want to, like, shift to go down into the ground so it looks more natural and. Oh! That worked? Yeah, that's okay. Alright, tigers. Rightio. Click on the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Okay then, open the terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. Right then, all animals need plants and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest and temperate biomes that are native to Asia. <laughs> Although if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. <laughs> the tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the environment tab. Ooh, I got an idea. Put some of that there. Okay. Um, how do the tigers feel about that? Now, as you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. You can find all of the plants you need in the nature section, and you can use the filters to only show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. Ooh, reeds. That look nice. Mm. All right, and then coconut palm. Tree. There we go. Silver. Mm -mm. They say the good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right. Let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. Well, before we do, I want to get a snap of the tiger. They look gorgeous. All right. I swear this thing is like so sensitive. Snap. There we go. Okay, I'm ready to go. Yes. Ha. 
Now then, just find one of the peafowls and select them to open their information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose gandering would just be for geese. Expand their social welfare so? and we can get a bit more detail. Okay, expand. Okay. Uh, now, they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Click on the social tab at the top of their information panel to see what's wrong. <laughs> right, as you can see, the peafowls need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the animal market then. Oh wait, hold on. Go back up, 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 back up. Good work on those pea fowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. <sighs> a lot of animals are getting into a lot of trouble, it seems. Alright, which way is the snow leopard? I think this way. Maybe. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. <laughs> in the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopards somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. Okay, so how's this gonna work? Ah, here! Don't understand how. Mm. Of course, when an animal go. isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly, for the snow leopards, it's it's too hot. <laughs> Even with the terrible British weather, you should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. Okay, I'm looking at it. As you can see, we already oh. have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as much of the habitat as chilly as we can. Luckily for us, this habitat already has power, but you'll need to make sure of that in the future. Just so you know, if any part of a habitat is powered, then the whole habitat will be powered. There we go, that should be fine. Oh, I placed that thing right over there. There we go. And I 
think we're going to need another one over here, maybe? You can find heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure to explore them and make good use of them. It'll take a little while for the temperature to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters, but now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopards' terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock, so let's make that happen. What kind of name is that? Oolin Yang and Tisset Seg. Oolin Yang. Oolin Yang. Yang. Oolin Yang and Tisset Seg. What is that name? <laughs> what is that? What kind of name is that? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what name was that for a snow leopard? That was ridiculous. Hey, where are you? Oh, you were in the tree. Still too much grass. Of that should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the zoo, you should go into zoo management and then into the animals section. As you can see, this list shows you the animal's overall welfare. So, if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using the locate button. Right, I'm off for a cuppa while you make sure all the animals are well looked after. Okay. Um... What do you need? You have no enrichment? Oh, poor girl. Right, well, righty then. What are we waiting for? Let's get this... Toidle. Some enrichment, I guess. Uh, filters. Biome. Well, what kind of habitat do these guys like? Well, actually, no, it's not that. We just gotta get, like, enrichment. Property? Nope, that's not it. Species, there we go. Mm -hmm. Small ball, small ball, colorful. Saw it, let's do this. Ooh. Herb scented scent marker. Block of frozen fruit. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. There we go. How's the enrichment for the uh, tortoises now? They also need a shelter, but I think enrichment is now covered. Yes! I think it is. It's just... They have too much long grass. Too much sand. Looks like they need, might need more rock. Right, what 
unless... Now they don't have enough long grass. Okay. No sand. Terrain, long grass. Well, I should probably keep like the turtle's thing up, shouldn't I? Alright, long grass. Don't go into the long grass! There you go. And sand. Okay, I don't want to modify their habitat all too much, but I think that is good. Okay, and it's the zebras. Uh, zebra, zebras. Then I have a problem. Why did I say it like I'm British? Right, they need more grass. Long grass, right? Terrain. Okay. What else are they needing? They need enrichment. I kind of need to figure out what kind of zebras they are. Plain zebra, okay. They need small bear feet. And a grab ball. Not bad. Not bad at Yay! all. I, did it. I think it's fair to say that you've passed the first part of your training with flying colors. There's still lots more to learn, but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that. If you want to grab your passport, we'll head off, shall we? Okay, I guess. We play, stay in this zoo, return to menu. Tyrannos Park Zoo. There we go. Mmm. Mmm. What was that about? <laughs> All 
right? The Madagascan Simian Conservation Project? Okay, the Madagascan Simian Conservation Zoo is the culmination of Bernard Goodwin's work in the region specializing in simian breed and release programs as well as campaigning and championing and highlighting diverse species of apes and monkeys, but never want to be complacent. Bernard now wants to know what you can do with his most promising of locations, okay? to see monkeys. Lots and lots of monkeys. I mean, that's from what I can gather. Welcome to Madagascar. It's quite the change of scenery from dreary old England, huh? <laughs> Apart from the weather, I suppose. They don't call these places rainforest for nothing. <laughs> the zoo you'll be working in is an ape sanctuary, where we're doing vitally important conservation work. Not just for apes, but for all kinds of species. But apes, well, apes are some of the closest relatives to humans there are. And yet, the way the world treats them is like... Well, very much like some of us treat our actual relatives. <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm determined that our operation here does some good. If we can all leave some part of the world in a better state than we found it, we'll have lived lives worth living. And speaking of states, I have a horrible feeling I left the house in the right one. <laughs> when I get back, I expect my life won't be worth living at all. <laughs> Okay. What do you think of Madagascar then? Bit warm for my tastes, to be honest. Anyway, this is Bernie's primate sanctuary. It's not just primates, though. We've got all sorts of animals. So why don't we go and have a look at some of them, eh? We'll start by taking a look at the red ruffed lemurs. They're the ones that look like they should be in a Shakespeare play. <laughs> Come on, let's head over to them. All right. Whatever you say, lady. Red ruffed lemurs are found in the rainforests of Masuala. That's in northeast Madagascar. They can actually live anywhere from 15 up to 25 years. Fancy that, eh? Okay, when you're ready, let's go find our Bornean orangutans. But those are mandrills. Why are the... Unless that's them. Yeah, there they are. Just gonna go ahead, slide. Ah, oh, I'm under the map. Once again, under the map. Good, 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 good. Good 40. Oh. The Bornean orangutan is such a marvelous creature. They're always a big favorite at any zoo they feature in. And they're also the biggest tree-dwelling animal on the planet. <laughs> Assuming you don't count any lions that got stuck up one. Oh, why don't you take a better look at them? Open up their information panel and go into the animal camera. Jizang. You have a really flat face. Aren't they just incredible? Monkeys. When you're ready, let's go and have a look-see at some of our beautiful bonobos. <laughs> They're quite the characters. Monkey. Uh, 
Monkey, 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 monkey. Like we've arrived just in time. One of the habitat's barriers has collapsed. And wouldn't you know it, one of the bonobos has made a run for it. We'll need to catch them. But before we do, we should box up the other bonobos to stop them escaping too. Select the habitat boundary to bring up the habitat information panel. Good. Now open the animals tab. And click on Box All Animals to box up the remaining bonobos. Now, we'll need a vet right. to recapture that escaped bonobo. But it seems our last one left to do some research in the wild. Not an ideal situation. So, we'll need to hire a replacement, Sharpish. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area. You can find all of your staff in here. But there's no time to go looking at their particulars at the moment. Hire a vet. Now, click on one of the paths to place the vet in your zoo. Oh, right, really? now let's deal with our SKP before they can cause too much havoc. Use the animal alert to jump to the escaped bonobo. And then, click on the call vet button to call the vet over to capture it. Okay, that's the relief. <laughs> so while the vet deals with our bonobo friend, let's go fix up their habitat so they can't escape again. Head back over there. Okay, I just gotta remember where the hell it was. Some mandrels. I got turned around, <laughs> turned around. Ah, uh, here. As you can see, the barriers collapsed. Someone's taken their eye off the ball, obviously. Let's get this one replaced. Select the barrier and then we'll edit it. Delete the broken section of barrier and replace it with a brand spanking new one. Oh, wait, what have I done? Select it. Well, this is just... I don't want the rock, I want the fence! The broken fence! Ah! Man, the controls of this are so finicky. Alright, now. And press delete. We need to find my delete key. Boop. Good. Yeah. Now that we've done that, we need to make sure to add climb proof barriers to the top. That way the bonobos won't be able to climb out. Just make sure you've got the correct piece of barrier selected when you do that. Okay, so go into the options section and select which side the climb proof barrier needs to go on. And don't get it wrong. <laughs> We're more worried about bonobos climbing out than guests climbing in. Nicely done. 
and I think it's high time we, we unbox go. those bonobos, wouldn't you say? <laughs> the poor mites will get sad if we leave them in there for too long. Select the habitat barrier to bring up the habitat information panel again. Alright. And then open the animals tab. There we go. And finally, click on unbox all animals to let them out. I expect some of them are fair bursting for the toilet. Nice so, image. it turns out that as well as the old vet leaving, the zoo's mechanics did too. We'll need to hire a couple of new ones so we can help stop any more breakouts. You see, mechanics do all sorts of helpful things around the zoo, but one of their most important jobs is taking care of the habitat barriers. <laughs> Without mechanics around to repair them, the barriers will crack, crumble, and fall Yee. down. And before you know it, we'll be overrun with escaped animals. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area again. Oh, done. <laughs> Gosh, we have been busy, haven't we? Good work there. I'm off for a cuppa. Oh, I think Bernie wants a word with you. Oh. I hear you had a bit of an issue with an escaped bonobo. The main thing is that you dealt with it swiftly. And more importantly, without the animal stealing someone's clothes, putting them on, and then walking out of the front gate. You see, another key responsibility for our vets is animal research. Researching animals allows vets to unlock new enrichment items, additional information for our education resources, enhanced breeding programs, and improvements to food quality. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the animal's food, not the vet's. It'll take more than a research grant to improve the staff canteen. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, research is a key part of running your zoo. In order for a vet to undertake research, they require a research center. And once again, that's something that this zoo is missing. So let's build one. I've marked out an area for you to put it. Of course she did, love. Now, you've did. probably noticed that there's already a building where I want you to build the research center. Oh. Don't worry. You see, the building that's currently there is actually a hollow shell. So we're able to place our new building inside of it. If you select the research center for placement and then hover over the shell, you'll see that it asks if you want to add the research center to the existing building. Okay, click to add it to the building. Oh, but that won't place it in just yet, though. First, we'll need to rotate our research center so it automatically connects to the path when we place it. Gotta get this right. I can do this. What are you? Oh, there we go. Insufficient. What? Splendid work. There we go. Now that we have a brand spanking new research center, we can give our vet something to do in there. Oh, by the way, it's worth noting that the vets will only do research when they're not required to do any other jobs. That said, you can change what jobs a vet does via their information panel. But let's not worry about that just now. So, let's get our vet researching ring-tailed lemurs. Go into the zoo section and select vet research. Here, you can see a list of all the animals present in your zoo, and also all the potential diseases that can occur. Now, drag and drop your vet onto the ring-tailed lemur to start their research. I will, as soon as you get the hell off my screen. 
Zachary Dottery, huh? Actually, thinking about it, I'm not sure we've got any education boards or speakers by the lemur's habitat. Let's head over there and add some, so our guests can learn all about the furry little delights. <laughs> well, where are these furry little delights? First off, let's pop down two education boards. Place them on the habitat barriers at a height that guests can see, or, if you like, pop them down on a stand. Okay, now that they've been put into position, we have to tell them what animal to display information about. Select one of the education boards to bring up its information panel. And from the drop down list, select ring tailed lemur. Although I'm sure that last part was obvious. When go. you link an education board or a speaker to an animal, you need to make sure that said animal is close by. If it isn't, the guests will get confused and won't learn as much. Okay, now that we've done the education boards, let's pop down a pair of speakers. Speakers play audio to the guests so they can learn while they look at the animals, instead of having to go through the laborious process of reading. Oh, one thing to bear in mind is that it's important not to put the speakers too close together. If you do, the guests won't be able to understand what's being said. Sure, it'll be fine. There we go. Now we simply need to link the speakers to the ring tailed lemurs, just like you did with the education boards. Well, now I can't even see the damn things. Remembering that education boards and speakers both need power to work. They won't do much good without it. Oh, it looks as though our vet has completed their research on ring-tailed lemurs. We'll need to collect the results. We can do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into the vet research area. Go on, collect your research rewards. Just so you know, vets will continue to research an animal even after successfully completing a research level. <laughs> I suppose when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. Well, now that we've enriched the lives of our guests, let's enrich oh, the lives of our ring-tailed lemurs. You're a little baby. Some animals, like lemurs, will have a climbing need. That means they have a requirement for a certain amount of climbing space. And you can fulfill that requirement by building them a climbing frame. Let's find out how much more climbing space our Lima friends need, shall we? Select one of them and bring up their information panel. Next, click on the Terrain tab. Ah, now, as you can see, the Lemurs need quite a lot more climbing space. But as it happens, I've already got a climbing frame blueprint built for you. So you can either pop that down or build one yourself from scratch. By the way, it's not always just climbing needs that you have to worry about. Other animals might need a certain amount of water in their habitat so they can go for a swim. <laughs> they certainly do keep us on our toes. Oh, that's a great climbing frame for them. They're going to absolutely love it. Do you know what would make them even happier, though? Nicer food. 
But that's true of all of us, though, isn't it? You can unlock better quality food for animals through research. Luckily, we've already unlocked some for the lemurs, so all that remains is to make sure they get served it from now on. Let's bring up the habitat information panel by selecting the lemur habitat. <coughs> okay. Lovely. Now select the animals tab. There we go. As you can see, we can set the food quality in here. Just click on the drop-down menu and select Grade 2 Food Quality. Grade 2 Food Quality. My mouth's already watering. So, a new climbing frame and better food. Oh, you've really spoilt those lemurs rotten. <laughs> now, I think it's time we looked at one of the zoo's most important responsibilities. Releasing animals into the wild. You see, when we feel an animal is ready, we can release them into the wild. But what makes an animal a good candidate for release? Well, their age is an important factor. I mean, we can't release an animal that's a juvenile, just as we can't release one that's gotten too old. They'll also need to be fertile. After all, the idea is to repopulate the wild, so the best candidates will have a high fertility gene. And together, the age and fertility of a candidate will determine how many conservation credits we'll be rewarded when we release them. Now, conservation credits are vitally important. They're the lifeblood of your zoo, because earning them allows you to adopt even more animals. And what's more, the animals you can adopt will be of a higher quality. So, with that in mind, let's pop over to our orangutan habitat. Agong. Okay, I'd like you to find Agang, the Bornean orangutan in the habitat, and select him, please. You can either click through each orangutan in turn, or select the habitat barrier, go to the animals tab in the habitat information panel, and find him in the animals list. All right. I know it's sad to see him go, but he'll be happy out in the wild. And he's a wonderful candidate for release, young, strong, and fertile. Excellent work there. You've definitely got potential, you know. Ah, I see you've been doing some homework. Although, it hardly seems like work when you're learning about something as adorable as a ring-tailed lemur. I imagine I'd have got much better grades at school if there'd been less algebra and more aldebra. Tortoises. Lovely. Now let's build a new exhibit in the gap that's been left. Just add it to the building like we did with the research center earlier, then pop it into the gap. Then pop it into the gap. Perfect. The next thing to do is adopt an exhibit animal to go in there. How about a Gila monster? Open up the exhibit trading section and adopt one. Just as we do with habitat animals, we need to send the Gila monster to the exhibit. Click on the exhibit to send it there. When you send an animal to an exhibit, it'll automatically be given the correct setup. But that doesn't mean it's completely ready for them. So let's finish it off. We'll start by adding some enrichment items. Click on the exhibit to bring up its information panel. As I'm sure you know by now, you can unlock more enrichment levels by having one of your vets do some research. Now we'll also need to set the temperature and humidity in the exhibit. These are vitally important for keeping our Gila monster happy and comfortable. Click on the Climate tab. Here, you can see the Gila monster's desired temperature and humidity. Oh, I see him You can change both of these by adjusting the dials below. Make sure it's going to be nice and cozy. That's the ticket. And the last thing we need to look at is setting up the different windows. So click on the Windows tab. 
You can edit and customize any of the windows on an exhibit. A window can be closed and blank or have a two-dimensional background or even a three-dimensional background on it. Why don't you have a play around with the options? Yay! There's also an exhibit education board. Pop them down near your exhibit to teach your guests about them. Let's add one now. There we go. I did it. What do you what else you want me to do? Didn't I just do that though? Oh wait. That's right. Heal a monster. Lovely stuff. Now our guests can learn all about our venomous friend here. Right, now I've got a bit of a big job for you. I need you to increase the number of species in the zoo. You'll probably want to adopt both habitat and exhibit animals to do so, which will mean building plenty of new habitats and exhibits for them. Go on, off you pop. I'll check in with you when you're almost done. Before I do that, I want a picture of this, like, Gila monster. Cause I love lizards. Ah! Too far. Too far. Boop. Boop. Too close. Boop. There it is. And snap. Oh, oops. Don't want to do that. What's in here? Ooh, an iguana. <laughs> I definitely want to pick up that. Boop. Beep. 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 Nope. <laughs> How is it that I can go a million miles an hour on this, but not on Path of Titans? You know what, I think that's about as good as it, it's gonna get. Alright. Oh, right, I completely forgot about him. Okay, um. Nutrients and better shelters, nature facilities. Well, that would be in a habitat. How's the Gila Monster habitat built? Yeah, it was built on one of these.
maybe. Just maybe. Damn! What do I do here? Well, well, what do I do? A tape here? Hmm. What can the hippos benefit from? Pretty sure they can't. Where's the orangutans? Maybe this place? <laughs> yeah, here. Okay, um, let's get some TPRs. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, giant burrowing cockroach. Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> There's the tape here. Needs enrichment though. So habitat. Filtered species. There's tape here. And a water pipe? Okay. And enrichment, they need a food spike tree. Yeah. And they should be okay now. Maybe. Species food, species tone, species bonus. Not much I can really do about that. Alright. Oh. Ten. Okay. Well, maybe we could put something here. make it go down. Is there a way to do that? Sap mask Q. No, oh, it's gonna be a shadow. Raise path, lower path. Okay, so it's J. Nope. 
Clearly a bad idea. Nope, did not mean to do that. I need help. How do I erase the path? How do I do it? It's you. Okay. There we go. No harm, no foul. It's all good. I guess we could build. You know what? Nah. Forget I ever tried this. It's not gonna work. I'll think about this. Come up with something. I always do. I'm smart. I can figure this out. Oh, for frick's sake, the game crashed. Ah, uh, Now that's just annoying. Did it save, at least? Please tell me it saved. Okay, it's saved. Alright guys, I think we're actually going to leave the stream here. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe today, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything new. Link to the Discord in the description down below. And until next time, this is Tyrannosempi signing off. Alrighty then. Take care now. Bye bye then.